Hello everyone. Welcome back to video lecture series on vitamins. I am Dr. Drupti and in today's video we are going to learn about vitamin B2 that is riboflavin. In addition to that we will also see one case study related to riboflavin deficiency. Vitamin B2 that is riboflavin it is a water soluble B complex vitamin and it was the first B complex component to be isolated in the pure state. Flavus means yellow in Latin and on exposure to uv light this gives yellow colored fluorescence that is the lumiflavin this riboflavin this is the structure of riboflavin it has three ring cyclic structure these are three rings it is dimethyl 67 dimethyl 90 ribitol isoaloxazin and at the n9 position this ribitol is attached which is the alcohol of ribose sugar there are two biologically active forms of riboflavin that is vitamin b2 first is fmn flavin mononucleotide second is fad flavin adenine dinucleotide and these biologically active forms they participate in oxidation reduction reactions important in various catabolic pathways as well as cellular respiration and the enzymes containing riboflavin they are called as flavoproteins There are two active forms as we know that FMN and FAD and riboflavin flavin is converted to its, its active coenzyme forms FMN and FAD with the help of enzymes flavokinase and ATP so this is the structure of riboflavin and this is converted into its coenzyme form that is FMN flavin adenine mononucleotide with the help of enzyme flavokinase and ATP is a phosphate donor here and phosphate group is attached to the this ribitol so it becomes flavin adenine mononucleotide further with the help of ATP and the enzyme FAD synthase the FMN will accept AMP moiety from this ATP to form FAD and there is formation of flavin adenine dinucleotide and it occurs in liver so these two coenzyme forms fmn and fad they are formed from riboflavin with the help of atp and the enzymes flavokinase and fad synthase now let's see the dietary sources and rda of riboflavin it is derived from the animal sources and animal sources are rich sources of riboflavin it can be derived from dried yeast liver kidney heart egg whole milk and fish Plant sources are also good sources of riboflavin like whole cereals legumes green leafy vegetables germinating grams germination increases the riboflavin contents of the seeds and it can also be synthesized by intestinal bacterial flora so it is derived from both animal as well as plant sources and can be synthesized by the intestinal bacterial flora The RDA in adults is 1.5 mg per day in pregnancy lactation and old age additional 0.2 to 0.4 mg per day more is required in addition to the adult requirement so this is about dietary sources and RDA of riboflavin riboflavins are ingested in the form of flavoproteins and later in the stomach the FMN and FAD are released from this flavoproteins and then free riboflavin it is absorbed in the small intestine by active transport and later this free riboflavin then through the circulation it reaches to various organs and it is converted in the cellular cytoplasm in their coenzyme forms that is fmn and fad but this coenzyme formation occurs mainly in the liver kidney heart and intestine and the form which is stored in the liver is fad form so in the liver it is stored in the form of fad coming to the biochemical functions of riboflavin and the biochemical functions are mainly due to the coenzyme forms of riboflavin that is fmn and fad and this fmn and fad coenzyme they function as prosthetic group of oxidation reduction reactions and this fmn fad they bind with flavoenzymes and they are called as flavoproteins and these flavoproteins as i have already mentioned they are involved in various oxidation reduction reactions of 
कार्बोहाइड्रेट लिपिड प्रोटीन न्यूक्लिक एसिड मेटाबोलिज्म एज वेल एज इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन नाउ दिस फ्लेव नाउ दिस को एनजाइम्स एफ एम एन एंड एफ एडी दे एक्सेप्ट टू हाइड्रोजन एंड रिड्यूस टू फॉर्म एफ एम एन एच टू एंड एफ एडी इज रिड्यूस टू एफ एडी एच टू एंड दैट्स हाउ दे दे आर इन्वॉल्व इन ऑक्सीडेशन रिडक्शन रिएक्शन सो दिस पिक्चर शोज दिस इज द एफ एम एन और एफ एडी क्यूनॉन फॉर्म on acceptance of first hydrogen at n5 position there is formation of semi quinone form fadh or fmnh and on acceptance of second hydrogen there is formation of hydro quinone form that is fmnh2 or fadh2 so both coenzymes fmn and fadh2 they are reduced and fmn becomes fmnh2 fad becomes fadh2 and from this fadh2 Uh, through its oxidation in electron transport chain we can get 1.5 atp now let's see the role of various flavoproteins and their corresponding metabolic pathways we know that they are involved in oxidation reduction reactions so let's first see fmn it is involved in the l amino acid oxidation fad is involved in various metabolic pathways like carbohydrate lipid purine metabolism amino acid metabolism of d amino acid oxidation so F fad it is the coenzyme of succinate dehydrogenase alpha keto ketoglutarate dehydrogenase so it is involved in the citric acid cycle it is also a coenzyme involved in pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so it has role in carbohydrate metabolism then it is also involved in purine metabolism lipid metabolism that is in the fatty acid oxidation it is the coenzyme of the enzyme which is involved in fatty acid oxidation in glycine and d amino acid oxidation also fad has very important role now both fmn and fad they are the components of mitochondrial respiratory chain that is electron transport chain and both fmn and fad the electrons from nadh they are transported to cytochrome p450 reductase through this fmn and fad so these are the various metabolic pathways uh, which have various oxidation reduction reactions and fmn and fad they they act as coenzymes of the various enzymes involved in all these metabolic pathways there are various fad dependent enzymes so we know that pyruvate is formed from the aerobic glycolysis and it is converted or oxidatively decarboxylated to acetyl coa by the action of enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase this is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex which is which is multi enzyme complex having three enzymes and five coenzyme later this acetyl coa it is oxidized through tca cycle so in the tca cycle one intermediate is alpha ketoglutarate which is converted to succinyl coa by the action of enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase which is also a multi enzyme complex so both are multi enzyme complex having three enzymes which are those three enzymes the first one is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase second is dihydrolipoyl succinyl transferase here in case of alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and third is dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase so this dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase it has fad as a coenzyme and there are various five cofactors which are required like thymine pyrophosphate lipoate fad nad and coenzyme a so in this case fad is involved in the both pyruvate dehydrogenase complex as well as alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex and fad is reduced to fadh2 then succinate to fumarate by succinate dehydrogenase so there is the fad is reduced to fadh2 later on which is oxidized through electron transport chain to form 1.5 atp so these are the various fad dependent enzymes fad can also act as an antioxidant let's see how in scavenging free radicals glutathione peroxidase plays a very important role which is selenium containing enzyme and which converts h2o2 to water that is hydrogen peroxide to water and it is second line of defense against the free radicals and in this process reduced glutathione is utilized it becomes oxidized glutathione 
Now this oxidized glutathione can be reversed back to this reduced glutathione with the help of enzyme glutathione reductase and this glutathione reductase it requires NADPH and it contains FAD and that's how to regenerate the reduced glutathione which will help to uh, scavenge the free radicals this glutathione reductase is required and which has FAD and that's how FAD help in the process of second line of defense against the free radicals and it is it acts as an antioxidant there are various other FAD dependent enzymes for example, 5-ten methylene tetrahydrofolate to 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate conversion by methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. This, this requires FAD. Then glycine to glyoxalate by glycine oxidase also requires FAD. Acyl-CoA to alpha-beta unsaturated acyl-CoA by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. So there is reduction of FAD to FADH2. Then the D amino acid to keto acid formation by D amino acid oxidase. It is also FAD dependent reaction. And xanthine to uric acid formation by xanthine oxidase. It also xanthine oxidase is also FAD dependent enzyme. So these are the various reactions where FAD is required. Now coming to the action of FMN, FMN has role in L amino acid oxidation. It is a minor pathway for ammonia formation uh, which metabolizes L amino acid and it uses FMN as coenzyme. So by the action of L amino acid oxidase, there is formation of keto acid and release of ammonia. And this requires reduction of FMN to FMNH2. And to bring back this FMNH2 to its FMN form, uh, Molecular oxygen is required and which is converted to hydrogen peroxide which is later converted to water and oxygen. And as there is generation of uh, hydrogen peroxide this reaction is called as pro-oxidative reaction. But FMN here it has role in L amino acid oxidation. FMN and FAD they have role in electron transport chain. FMN it is a part of complex 1 in electron transport chain where it accepts 2 electrons and 2 hydrogen ions from NADH. FAD it is a part of complex 2 where it accepts 2 electrons and 2 hydrogen from substrate of citric acid cycle succinate. So that's how they play a very important role in electron transport chain. Now coming to the riboflavin deficiency various causes and manifestations. The riboflavin deficiency it is called as a riboflavinosis. There are various causes of a riboflavinosis. It can occur in protein energy malnutrition that is Kosherkar due to vitamin B1 deficiency beriberi. So it can occur in beriberi. Chronic alcoholism can also lead to riboflavin deficiency. Anorexia. Malabsorption, this can also cause riboflavin deficiency and treatment of phototherapy will also lead to riboflavin deficiency. Now what are the various clinical manifestations? So the deficiency symptoms or clinical features, they are mainly confined to the skin and mucous membrane. So the first manifestation is glossitis. Glossitis means inflammation of tongue. Tongue becomes smooth and purplish or magenta colored like this. And there is chylosis. There are fissures at corner of lips and mouth. And angular stomatitis. There is inflammation at the corners of mouth. So these are the various symptoms of riboflavin deficiency. There can be corneal vascularization and dermatitis also. Laboratory diagnosis of a riboflavinosis includes serum riboflavin level estimation which will be decreased in the severe deficiency. Then measurement of erythrocyte glutathione reductase as an index for riboflavin status. So this glutathione reductase erythrocyte level it is used for laboratory diagnosis. The activation of erythrocyte glutathione reductase by FAD it is added in vitro for the this measurement of erythrocyte glutathione reductase. And measurement of RBC or urinary riboflavin concentration. So these can be used for the laboratory diagnosis of a riboflavinosis. Which is the anti-metabolite of riboflavin? 
it is galactoflavin it is the anti metabolite of riboflavin in today's video we have seen chemistry dietary sources rda various coenzymes of riboflavin their biochemical functions various metabolic pathways where this coenzymes of riboflavin like fmn and fad uh, they are they act as coenzyme and we have also seen the deficiency causes manifestations and laboratory diagnosis of a riboflavinosis now let's see one case study of uh, vitamin b2 deficiency that is a riboflavinosis a middle aged woman came to the hospital with fissures in tongue angular stomatitis tingling and numbness in hands investigation showed reduced glutathione reductase activity in rbc so this is a clear cut case of vitamin b2 deficiency that is a riboflavinosis the clinical features involving the mucous membrane like angular stomatitis fissures in tongue and also on investigation the glutathione reductase activity in erythrocyte it is reduced so this this points towards the diagnosis of a riboflavinosis and these are the various common clinical uh, means questions can which can be asked on this clinical case study now let's see some mcqs so the first one is glossitis is due to deficiency of niacin thymine riboflavin or vitamin b12 so glossitis that is magenta colored inflamed tongue it is caused due to deficiency of riboflavin that is vitamin b2 all of the following are fad dependent reactions except succinate dehydrogenase acyl coa dehydrogenase xanthine oxidase or lactate dehydrogenase so we know that succinate dehydrogenase pca cycle acyl coa dehydrogenase beta oxidation of fatty acid xanthine oxidase uric acid formation all these require fad as coenzyme but lactate dehydrogenase require nad and that's why the answer here is lactate dehydrogenase riboflavin is needed as a coenzyme fad in the reaction catalyzed by glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase fatty acyl coa dehydrogenase or malate dehydrogenase so we know that it is required for fatty acyl coa dehydrogenase fad is required as coenzyme so the answer here is c that is fatty acyl coa dehydrogenase The vitamin used in electron transport chain is is it biotin, riboflavin, pyridoxine or pantothenic acid? So we know that in electron transport chain, FMN and FAD they are required, which are the coenzymes of riboflavin. So here the answer is B, that is riboflavin. Laboratory measurement of following enzyme in RBC is used to assess riboflavin deficiency. Is it glutathione reductase, superoxide dismutase? pyruvate dehydrogenase or xanthine oxidase it is glutathione reductase so glutathione reductase in rbc activity it is used to assess riboflavin deficiency that's all about today's video lecture on vitamin b2 that is riboflavin i hope this video will be useful to you and if you like the content on this channel please subscribe to this channel like and share the videos and help this channel to grow thank you for watching and happy learning